and because they were home for such a long time they were told how they're ugly right and how them papa not even send no money for them mind them and all them something they said they had no escape route Hey, what's up? Andrea Delcito right here. Um, actually, I was just on um, Nationwide with Cliff Hughes speaking about the violence in schools and what is happening. Um, we were focusing a little bit on what has happened at William Nib. I want to say condolences to the William Nib High School family and also condolences to Kamal's immediate family and his schoolmates especially and also his football colleagues I can well imagine how traumatized you are you know um, one of the things I was saying on the program is that violence ha for me has not escalated um, it has picked up from where it left off what I have never met though is persons fighting over a paraphernalia such as a guard ring I've never I've never seen that and then that is at a higher level and so therefore you realize that children are picking up on what is happening in the wider society all right and it's there in the songs that we sing about what that, that our artists sing about you know managyad up and all them something there there's just so much nudity i worked at the primary level in 2018 and i was pretty much surprised i was frightened i was literally shocked and so what is happening is our children are inundated with everything you can think of just this year by january 23rd we were 15 percent higher in violence than in 2021 all right what that is saying it is saying that our children are suffering they are hurting and they are not able to express themselves in 2019 i remember being a part of a school that had violence on top of violence as a quint there was a big fight massive fight I was one of those who had to do so many incident reports and most of those incident reports had to go straight off to the Ministry of Education because of the severity of the incidents. All right, that student who actually went into a coma, I was part of that um, school and had to write the report for the Ministry of Education based on what happened. And so I want to say to you that in 2000, a year 2000, a publication came out from the American Psychological Association that said that games do contribute to violence. And you have to watch parents, you have to watch your children at home, you have to watch what they play, you have to watch what they view, what video, video they watch, what, what, um, what do they watch on TV. All right, when you have your cable network, what is it that they're watching on cable, right? Because a lot of us, you know, we see these things as moving up in society. Lord may have cable now. But when you have the cable now and they can sit in front of the cable now and then watch the cable now, are you watching what channels they watch? Do you know when you're off to bed, do you know what they're up doing? Can you trust them? to say they are doing what you would have wanted them to do. And so parenting plays a big role. Um, the village raises a child or the village, village raises a child. We have to go back to it too. Because these days, people clean the cut their hair and say, I can't look at my son. I can't even talk to that. They want to feed my mom. You can't talk to him. You can't talk to him. You can't talk to him. I'm picking it. And you know, and nobody wash off their mouth on them. But we have to go back into a situation where the community, the community, one hand watch, wa wash the other, one yay watch the other. In other words, it has to be a community effort because with so much nudity going around, I will look here, the amount of videos with nudity, remember now we know, social media is at large. It's not like one time when me grow a country and... I know me never see for my parents. Me don't know how my parents get baby. And before we don't know how my parents get baby. No, it's easy. You, you just pick up your phone and you can't see what I go on. It's just, it's just very easy for children to see sexual activity and for them to see excessive nudity. And so our children are very sexualized. It's a lot of pressure our children bear, you know, a whole heap. And so I'm asking the parents not to be very careless 
you know, because some of our parents we kill this. We see one video, and as we see video, so we we'll pass it on and tell our parents, say, look at this, and it's one of the kiki 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 kick, 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 kick. It cannot work. It can't work. And then the violence again. What has happened why our children have become um, emotionally immune is because when we see certain kind of violence, we find it funny. Right, and we laugh. I say, Lord God, look at the man kicking me in the face, and the man turn up. If, if I meet the man kicking on my face, I'm not turn up and take that in the dog. What is happening? They are internalizing violence and they are trivializing it as well. And so, you find that to get rid of one boy and nothing because in the games, when they're playing the games as well, the aim to win is to get rid of. All right, and if you don't get rid of in time, so you have to move quickly. And so basically it's the same thing in the school system. Me have to take down a boy before a boy take me down. Me have to take down a girl before a girl take me down. All right. And then my friend, I'm going to cheer me on. Yay. So basically that is the same thing that they practice in the games. Now, first time we would have fight fist to fist. And then slowly it became you know, you start, them start carrying tools to school. Sometimes they would have used compass and all them. Something they, no, it get worse. They're finding so many knives. And so I don't agree with the whole thing that it is big post-pandemic um, stress that is causing all of this. No, we've been having violence in schools for a long time. In 2015, I was at Vare Technical High School and I remember the many fights the many massive fights that were there that students would take up desk and fling and land in a boy, boy picnic took up desk and fling and land in a girl picnic and all them look at something there and I mean, I say, yo, when did we get here? And then we start to analyze it and I watch and I realize, I say, yo, these boys are getting very crude. They are cool with the girls, them. Yo, they not protect girls at all. Them not have no female soft spot or soft spot at all, at all, at all. And they just grab a girl and box her and all them someday. So 2015, fast forward to when I saw our men killing our women in 2018 and 2019. I said, see there, I saw it in the schools. I saw it in the schools where our boys were not respecting the females. And now see it, the men are killing off the women. So not, not just start one time so. Mark you, I am not erasing the lockdown that has happened. And I'm not saying it has nothing to do with the violence that is happening. Because a lot of our students lost loved ones. They lose parents, uncles, aunts, cousins. Many children in school lost many relatives. They not just lose one. They would have heard adults in the home complaining about the lockdowns, complaining about how they can't get to bury their loved ones, complaining about who they are firing and can't get to come down. You know, um, they, they need grief counseling. A lot of these children need grief counseling in the schools. We have to bring in persons in the classrooms and I don't want it to be a devotional thing. I want it to be more intimate where you go into the class and get these children to exhale. They need to exhale, they need to ball, they need to get rid of some of the pent up sorrows and grief what they have. So the schools need to have de-stress days where you know but I focus on no academics. Each teacher just go there, talk with the children, let them talk, let them vent, let them clear their mind. If they want ball, them ball, and if teacher want ball to your ball, because guess what? Teacher stress, speaking is stress. Everybody stress, parents stress. So we come back from one whole two years and odd of stress and in high school. They the picking it, they them no most violent. They no most look here. I will if I something go on in them time. They know in I two years the amount of something we got long. The amount of new music we release, the amount of new video we release, the amount of people we change their boyfriend, change their husband, the amount of people we pass on, the amount of people we migrate, the amount of people we divorce, the amount of people we married. All sorts of things happen within the two and a half years. People get pregnant and have picnic. You understand? 
So I'm saying I made the appeal already and um, I hear Dan Harrison saying that they, you know, they, they, they now are going to do something for the schools. And I want to add my voice to it that you have to have de-stress days instead of focusing on the academics, focus on the stress that these children have gone through over the period of time. A lot of them have been molested, them can't talk about it, and them come across class and I try to learn social studies and geography and mathematics and then all them have is flashbacks all of them a lot of children got pregnant over the period right so many things happen to our children our children suffered you know they suffered and because they were home for such a long time, they were told how they're ugly, right? And how they papa not even send the money for them, mind them, and all them something. They said they had no escape route. And a lot of single mothers cuss off for pitting them, and all them little something. They, well, a whole heap of something go down. A whole heap of something go down. So, you know, I'm appealing to the Ministry of Education to allow the principals to let these children enjoy themselves. Let them get into games where they, they now learn coping strategies, coping Open mechanisms learn how to share how to socialize all right teach them some more emotional intelligence that's so important how to separate their emotions so the games that you play even though you might play that game and you have to get rid of a man quickly in order for you to win it doesn't mean that your friend your classmate whenever you have anything wrong anything against the grain of your belief if them take away a book if them take away your pen without your permission, it doesn't give you the right to erase that person from the face of the earth. So emotional intelligence, let them separate their feelings, learn to pack up their emotions in different segments and work with it. It shouldn't be a case becoming a light together because she come and sister may I eat my lunch and she can't trip over my foot. You can't just get up and go so woof in our jaw corner. Teach our boys to protect the woman. All right, teach them to be men, gentlemen of tomorrow. We need that kind of training in our schools. We need to groom our boys. We need to groom our girls. All right, it's very important. I let them know about inappropriate actions. And inappropriate touches is not, is not just a matter of teaching it in the primary school. You have to tell them what happened, what is the result, of inappropriate touches all right what happens if you're in an inappropriate relationship what happened if you end up in an incestuous relationship oh let me look at something that we need to talk about and stop hiding it there are some principals who don't want people to speak clearly about certain things they say it's raw we have to move away from that life our children know far more than us as I say, they are on social media, which is untamed, unmanned. They can watch anything that they want to watch. They know to navigate these platforms far more than we can. They can navigate these sites. They know to trick us and get to watch what they want to watch. And so I'm appealing to parents, I'm appealing to teachers, I'm appealing to principals, I'm appealing to community. Let us get involved. Let's pretend that our children is a Labor Day project. And so we have to get involved and make it look good. That is what I'm appealing for at this time. Let us get involved in our children's life, not just through Pitney alone, but every child, because it is terrible. We have to go back to basics. We really have to. And one of the reasons why it is very urgent is because our children are exposed. They're not just exposed, them overexposed, them over sexualized. They see posters with nudity. They see videos with nudity. They listen music with nudity. Because the language is so raw and loose and lewd. So everything for them, the dietary intake of a picnic is just awful. It awful. And for the parents who are trying their best, congratulations to you. I know it's hard because when you send your children out there and the children have to mix up 
with those who are not getting good parental guidance it make you worry and it make you stress and you don't know what might happen you don't know the amount of toxicity that your child has to go up against and if your child is going to be converted even eventually you don't know you know and that is a fear of many parents that children will convert their children yes but as i say the important thing is always to grow them tough don't just grow them tough tell them to look out for certain things when they're out there and not to be sponge and be absorbed or not to absorb rather what the negatives that are out there kind of now go put them away many children are hopeless they're not even sure to be honest they're not sure they're not sure if if they're not gonna live visit tomorrow they're not sure if if they finish school it'll go it'll go work well they don't know because you have to remember you know in the two years it was such a touch and go this made your ears say school ago open then your ears say no you're going to turn a yard this made them get them khaki by and they 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 then tunic and then white blows and sitting and you hear say all oh, school ago open then so you find that they don't trust the system they don't trust the system, so they are just passing through. You ever throw one, one, one box in a river or one leaf and you just see it a galang so on the water, this a pitchy anyway, so that's how our children are. They are not trusting the system and they need to trust the system. They need to trust us. Because remember, you know, our children depend on us as adults to guide them. And if every time they, they outstretch their hands like this, right, to put in our palm, so that we clasp our hands and hold theirs and just when they reach for our hand we let it go they said jesus so they develop mistrust and that is what is happening a lot of them in our school they said to themselves so we come at school when we feel in a mind so they so lock school you know we feel deep in a mind so probably i go lock school so they are there but they are not there all right so see what we can do the churches need to get involved you know invite them onto the church space have games and so forth and, and 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 just it's not always about just praying for children in our church it's not always about inviting them to holy ghost preaching our church it's not always about oh repent 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 that's not always it in our church church i'm expecting you to get our children involved in handling their emotions and understanding life and life's trajectories you understand me and knowing that life has its storms and its clouds and its sunshine and its great beach days all right that is what i want the church to do i want the church to grow our children that is what i'm expecting i just don't want the church to invite them on and then say to them say if you're not sure to offer enough for me church we don't have to throw x amount of offering that is not it oh young people a lot of our young people don't even want to come to the church so i'm ask, asking the church open your doors no open the grounds no and see if you can be one of the agents out there that engage the community. See if you can do some games. Get some activities that bring the children into the churchyard. Yes, man. I make them learn for sheer. Make them learn for communicate. Teach them the manners, little ethics, little etiquette. Yes, man. Teach them sitting. Nobody just have them a come a church dress up and then jump asleep and water jump from their mouth because church boring and frighten them when they go hey we could do better than that man church one the day me long for hear from you me long for hear you doing something great for our children do something now yeah man help out man help out the ministry of education i know a lot of you congratulations to a lot of you kudos i'm um, helped you house the children you provided internet service for them and you get some of your members to provide um tablets and so forth but that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about their emotional well-being and stability that is what i'm asking you to get involved in yes let us make our children an all year round labor project a labor day project Turn our children into Labor Day projects. Make them come out spanky new and they look nice. Let's clean them up. Yes, man. All right. My name is Andrea Del Cito Wright. Once again, I must say to all my people out there who are having menstrual 
challenges, mental cycle challenges, remember there is desired balance. All right, you can have your desired balance. Wait, I have one here that I'm drinking, yes. Have your desired balance to give you a healthy balance. All right, um, 236-4179 is a number, 876 236 Four one seven nine to order your desired balance. I love you, and as always, I always say you're beautiful. Stay beautiful. Keep your children beautiful. Try as much as possible to steer them away from what is not helping them. Take care. Bye bye. Hey, Delcita here. What's up? Let me tell you something. I have health issues, and my health issue is that I suffer very low iron, sometimes almost anemic, fainted and all them something. They whenever I have their little something, sometimes I miss functions because of how weak I feel. And when I get weak, when my iron drops very low, as they say, lot of sugar drop on her. Yes, you know, um, my just office don't answer me can go. Rehearsals, all them something day. Sometimes I forgot rehearsal, and because I do this and do that, by the time I know me for jumping in a week and drive go, me can't left because my iron drop on me and I feel like I'm going to faint and all in the something there. Now, I have discovered a product that has served me well. When I say serve me well, serve me well. Me not, up to the other day, I'll cut this. I have been afraid to tell you that I have cut this chop out me. Uh, Desired Balance is the name of the product. It's the name of the brand, Desired Balance. They have one called Full Joy. They have one called Iron Boost. There's another one called Morning Burst. And there's also one that is called Oh My Callaloo. No, my favorite is Oh My Callaloo. To me, you are so wonderful. Now, these juices, they are combined in such a way that when I drink them, believe you me, my energy, they wee up and stay up. Yes. So, Desired Balance. And if you're one of those persons who have heavy menstruation, Jesus, speaks for me, menstruation heavy, so till sometimes, may I tell you the truth, me don't know how me cope. I cannot tell you the amount of catastrophes that have happened. That is for a different recording. Right, so if you suffer depression, anxiety, stress, low iron, almost anemic or anemic, remember, these juices are for you. Desired balance, 773-448. Call them now. And make sure you get your juices and make sure you stay in tip top shape. I can't cut yard like me. Oh, you mean? Tell them so they'll see it, I send you. Bye. <laughs>